Are you thinking of living in Katy, Texas, but you'd really like to know what it's actually like to live there, and preferably from somebody who has lived there themselves, then today's video is for you. I actually grew up in Katy, Texas and graduated from Katy High School, and I know all that there is to know, all the good and the bad, the pros and the cons of living in Katy, Texas. Let's get right into it. Pro number one, Katy has great access to highways. You have Highway 99, which actually runs north and south and cuts through basically the middle of Katy. Highway 99 is a tollway as you go north past I-10 and as you go south past West Park Tollway. But in the middle, in between where Cinco Ranch is, that is actually not a tollway. But ideally, this allows you to get anywhere that you need to go in Houston because from wherever you are in Katy, you can either hop on 99 to go north and south. That allows you to get to things like Richmond and Sugarland on the south side or to get to places like Cypress, Tomball, Spring, the Woodlands on the north side. Or you can hop on I-10 and I-10 takes you all the way into downtown Houston. So if you have a commute for your job and you're working off of the energy corridor, which is Highway 6, maybe you're working off the Galleria area at 610, or maybe you're working straight in downtown, I-10 is gonna be your main highway that's gonna get you there. And I think that really is a benefit of living in Katy where you're not so far away from major highways that it takes you a, lot, a long time to get there. Now, I will say on the flip side of that, that is also a con because of the fact that you are living off of I-10 and 99, they actually tend to be really terrible for traffic. So if you're not timing your commute very well, you're gonna find that you're gonna spend a lot of time getting back home on 99 whenever you live in Cinco Ranch or you live on the north side in Ellison, they get super backed up. For whatever reason, when they built 99, I don't think they fully understood how quickly Katy was going to grow and it took them so long to start expanding it that for the longest time, it's only been two lanes and that uh, it just immediately creates it's a bottleneck when you've got there's almost 400,000 people that live in the greater Katy area. And so that that's just a lot of people who are commuting on those roads and to only have two lanes. Um, it's just surprising how long it took for them to actually do it. Now, I have seen them start construction on 99 within the last couple of years and they are expanding it. So that is certainly going to help with some of that traffic, especially in the middle of uh, Katy where the Cinco Ranch area is. That's usually where it gets the most backed up. And so thankfully, uh, widening those lanes should add a little bit of traffic traffic uh, congestion relief for those of you who are thinking of moving to that area. Now, in terms of I-10, I don't really know how much wider it can get. I think it's like 10 or 12 lanes on either side. I mean, it's it's ginormous. Um, but again, with that amount of people all traveling to work all at the same time, it's gonna get backed up. Now, I will say that depending upon what time you're going into work, it doesn't always mean that it's gonna double the length of your commute. Your average commute time, if you were to drive from Katy to Houston during non-rush hour, maybe on the weekend or something like that, you're probably looking at, depending upon where you are in Katy, maybe 35 minutes, 40 minutes to get into downtown. But if you are traveling at peak rush hour time, I mean, it could take you an hour to an hour and a half to get all the way in downtown just because of the amount of people that are making that same drive as you. Now, I will say that if you are using I-10 in order to commute, one benefit that there is there is there is a toll section. So you can actually use your easy tag, which is like a little sticker that you put on your windshield that allows you to drive through uh, these kind of touchless toll um, meters. Um, so you do have access to that. And that's my cat, Max. Um, he's decided that when I film videos is the best time for him to start messing with stuff like the plants on the back. Look, there he's, he's doing it right now. If you are taking I-10, you do have the benefit of having access to toll lanes as well as HOV lanes. So if you buy an easy tag, you it's a little sticker that you can put on your windshield and that allows you to drive through I-10 on your own separate lane. Um, and a lot of times I find that that can shorten your commute by 15 minutes, sometimes 20 minutes. If there's a wreck or something like that, it could, it could even shorten it by more. Uh, but on average, yeah, 15, 20 minute savings just by using the easy tag. But I will say that it is very expensive. If you are using the easy tag lane, uh, or the toll lane to get into downtown every single day there and back, it's gonna rack up a, a bill pretty quickly. I mean, I think at one point when I was traveling into the Galleria area for work in the morning um, and I was using the toll lane basically every day, I think I was spending 120 to $150 per month just on easy tag fees uh, or toll fees. So it, it does add up. You would wanna add that to your budget if that's something that you're considering uh, utilizing. Now, if you're using the HOV lane, you can actually uh, choose to carpool with somebody else. And so as long as you have one other person in the car with you, then uh, you can actually use basically that, that there's de two dedicated lanes on either side going in and coming out. Uh, one is f dedicated for easy tag and one is dedicated for HOV. So if you have somebody riding with you, then you can use that easy tag 
um, or those two dedicated lanes for free. Um, and so a lot of times if my wife uh, didn't have work at the same time, and but she needed to get things done in town, we would just ride together. She would drop me off at the office and then she would take the car and do whatever else she needed to do. And that allowed us to get into downtown uh, for free, but we got to skip all the traffic and wave at everybody as we were making our way into town. Pro number two of living in Katy, Texas is the school system. Katy ISD ranks number one in all of Houston for school districts. And actually, if you have students or kids who are going to be athletes, it ranks number 15 in all of Texas. So it goes without saying, I actually went to Katy ISD. Uh, I went to Katy High School itself and football is life. Literally everybody in the city goes and watches the games. And that's why they built Legacy Stadium, which is actually the second largest stadium for high schools in all of Texas. It costs over $72 million to build and seats 12,000 people. You can actually see it in my full vlog tour that I did of Katie, and you can check that video out. But sports is everything, and I think if you've made the decision or you're considering moving to Katy, it's probably because of the schools or because your kids are playing sports and you want them to get good scholarships and to, to get scouted, uh, then Katy is going to be the perfect place for that because those are literally the two big reasons that people are usually moving here. Uh, they're not usually moving for uh, because there's lots of businesses in Katy. Uh, most people who are living in Katy are commuting into their offices for their companies, which are in the Energy Corridor or in downtown or in the Galleria Post Oak area. There's not going to be too many headquarters that are going to be in Katy itself. Now there is a big Amazon headquarter that was recently built uh, that's not too far away. Um, and there is like a big igloo. Uh, and there's a few other larger companies that do have like warehouses and shipping centers. But most of your corporate offices, most of your, your kind of skyscraper type uh, companies, those are going to be a little bit more into town. Um, so anyways, most people are relocating for those jobs, but they're choosing Katy and they're choosing to live in Katy because of the schools. If you want to know more about the schools in Katy and which ones are the best ones according to niche.com, you can check out my full map tour video that I just recently posted. Now, con number two of living in Katy is there really is no nightlife. There are a few uh, places here and there. They're gonna be mostly bars, some entertainment venues. You're gonna have more family, family friendly activities. So you will have things like main events and Typhoon Texas, which is a big water park and Slick City, and you have the mall. But in terms of bars, clubs, lounges, you're really not gonna find any of that in Katy just because it's a typical suburban area. Most of those are going to be found closer into town, predominantly as you get inside the loop, which would be 610. That's where you're going to find a lot more of those nightlife activities. So if you like going out after eight o'clock and you want to do something that's mostly for adults, there's just not going to be too much of that in Katy. But again, I think most people living in, in the suburb areas already know that. Um, so if that's you, you're probably going to do what me and my wife did, which is essentially every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we were traveling into town to go and experience the nightlife, to be able to hang out with friends and be able to go to, you know, go bar hopping, things like that. That's just really going to be something that you go into Houston for, which again, as long as you're not going during rush hour, then it's usually only 35, maybe 40 minutes to get into town for that. Now, pro number three of living in Katy is there are tons of new construction opportunities. So if you're trying to move somewhere and you really want to live in a new home, uh, there are so many opportunities for that. Most of those are going to be starting at a little bit higher price points, which is why I would say a con that also relates to this is that the average price in Katy for a home is closer to that 400 mark at this point. If you would have moved to Katy maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you would have found a lot more opportunities in that 200 price range 250. Now most of your homes are going to be starting in the upper 300s um, for for a, a larger home. Now, depending upon where you're moving from, that might not be a, a super big deal. I mean, you're still getting a lot of times an 1800 square foot home with three bedrooms and two bathrooms and a large front yard and backyard for that price, which might be way more than you might get in some other, you know, coastal areas. If you're coming from California or Seattle, or you're coming from New York or the East Coast, then yeah, I mean, you're still getting way more than you would get in those areas areas for that price. But it's not, I, I would say it's not as affordable as a lot of people think that it is because they're still thinking kind of pre COVID. Uh, we really saw huge increases in values. A lot of people were getting 20% increases in their home's value almost overnight. And so those prices have not dropped at all. And in fact, they've continued to go up. Now in the last couple of years, you've seen some, some of the average price coming down just a little bit. That's because there's been a little bit more negotiation because interest rates have been a little high uh, in 2023 and 2022. But uh, overall, they are still up compared to uh, where they were pre-COVID. And I've helped a lot of families relocate here in the last few years who are a little bit 
surprised that they weren't getting as much home as they thought that they were going to get based off of what they had been told about what it's like moving to Houston and to Texas. But with that being said, in terms of new construction opportunities, there are so many neighborhoods building in that northern section of Katy that you're going to find tons of stuff at different price points, really starting in kind of the mid to high 300s and going over a million. So whether you want a one story home with three bedrooms or you want a six uh, six bedroom home, two story uh, that backs up to a lake. I mean, really the options are endless. Most of those construction opportunities are gonna be on the north side of Katy. You'll have kind of two options. You'll be able to go with inventory homes, which are homes that are already built or that are close to being finished. Um, and so those are gonna be, uh, you're not gonna be able to pick any of the selections inside of them, um, but they are still new homes. You're still gonna be able to do an inspection on them, make sure that they're built correctly. You're still gonna get a warranty. You're gonna get a little bit of a better deal and they're usually quicker to move into, or you have building from the ground up opportunities, which means you literally go into that community. We tour it together. We decide where the lots are, where you might wanna build your home. And then different builders in these communities have access to different lots at different sizes. So we just find the builder and the lot that makes most sense for you. And then we pick the floor plan that works. And then you get to pick all the selections. You actually go to a design center and you get to select all the colors, the materials, the finishes, the fixtures. Um, it, it's, a, it's a much lengthier process. So if you're trying to move in the next few months, usually an inventory home is gonna be a better option. But if your time frame is a little bit farther out and you've got maybe six to nine months or even 12 months before you need to actually be moved, then something like new construction from the ground up can actually be a great option because you have a lot more to, to pick from and customize, but it is going to be a much longer process because they actually have to build it, pour the foundation, all that kind of good stuff. Either way, it's both new construction, it's just the, the availability in terms of being able to move in right now um, and the length of time that it takes to build it and whether you want the choice of picking all the options or you wanna just rely on what the designers who worked with the builders decided were the most common things that people picked anyways and you can get an inventory home and usually get a better deal on it. So most of these communities are going to be on the north side of Katy. So you've got um, neighborhoods like Sunterra, which is a huge new master plan development. Uh, you have Ellison, which has actually existed for a few years at this point, but they've, they're have they opening up new sections all the time. Um, and Ellison is actually built by, uh, by Newland Communities, which is the same developer that built Cinco Ranch. So if you've heard of Cinco and you've seen pictures of it, you've seen the builders and all that, if you really want a new home, in what will be the next Cinco, then I would say that's gonna be something like Ellison uh, because you're gonna have more premier builders. You're gonna have like Highland Homes and Perry um, and you're gonna have Chesmar and Weston and uh, these builders are building in Ellison and so you can, there's new construction opportunities uh, for them in these new sections. And um, I've seen some truly massive houses there. So if you want something that's maybe a little bit on the nicer side and you like the feel of Cinco Ranch but you don't want something old, um, then I would say Ellison is gonna be your best bet on that north side of Katy. You've got tons of other developments that are happening around those two communities. Those are just two of the big master plan ones uh, that are being built right now. And that leads me into pro number four, which is master plan communities. If you are moving to Houston and you are living somewhere else, like maybe closer into town, you're really not gonna find very many of these master plan developments. They just don't really exist as you get closer into the city. One, because there's not as much land available, uh, but, so, but two, um, a lot of these builders that are building these communities, they're building hundreds, if not thousands of homes. So what happens is, is a developer buys, let's say a hundred acres out in Katy, then they subdivide all the land into different sizes and into different sections, and then they invite builders to come and build in the community. Uh, so master plan communities are usually going to have a 10 or 15 year development cycle. They're gonna be planning schools and amenities and shopping and restaurants and dining and all kinds of stuff to go along with the community, not to mention pools and parks and lakes and walking trails. So if you really like that vibe, you wanna basically live somewhere where you don't have to go much else outside of just living in your community, you're gonna find a lot more of that out in the suburbs in places like Katy. Whereas if you go into town, you're generally going to be living just in the city and it's more of a grid and your amenities really are the location. Your amenity really is the shopping and restaurants and dining that are being built there by you know, entrepreneurs. It's not necessarily things that are being guided by some sort of development plan like there would be in something like Katy or the Woodlands. Now on the flip side, con number four is because of these master plan developments, um, they are moving farther and farther outside of the cities that they are 
zoned to or have addresses for. So for example, when you're buying a home in Katy, you're not actually living in Katy the city. You're usually living in what's called an ETJ or an extra territorial jurisdiction. That's your word for today. These ETJs might have Katy addresses uh, or they might have Houston addresses, but they're not necessarily within the city limits, which means that they're not getting city water, city sewer, things like that. You are usually in what's called a mud district. So a mud district is a municipal utility district. There's your second word for the day. And these mud districts levy a tax against those that live in that area, which basically subsidizes the cost of building out all the sewer systems and the water and the plumbing and all of that for that area. So they get a bond. They, that's millions of dollars. They build out this mud district, which is providing water and sewer services. And then they pass that on to the residents of those areas in the form of mud taxes. Because of that, your property taxes out in these master plan communities and in a lot of these areas of Katy, especially the newer homes, your property taxes are gonna be much higher than they would be if you were in the city limits itself, or if you were in older, more established areas that are closer into the actual city center, uh, because those, if they had a mud tax, that mud tax has already been paid down because they've existed for 15, 20, 25 years. But if you're in these newer developments, these newer master plan communities, they're just getting started. So you might be looking at tax rates that are sometimes at 3.75 or even four, um, and which is, I know, if you're coming from anywhere else that is outside of Texas, that just seems like an astronomically high property tax. And it is. Now we don't have state income tax and some of those other things, so it balances out a little bit, uh, but we do have high property taxes here in general compared to the rest of the United States. But specifically in these suburban areas like Katy with these new developments, you're gonna have much higher property taxes. And uh, that's one, because of the mud districts, and two, it's because a third of that property tax is actually going to the school districts. So as great as Katy ISD is, if you don't have kids that are going to those schools, you are still paying that school tax and you're still spending a third of your property taxes are going towards schools that you're not even necessarily using. So that is something to consider. That's the reason why we moved into town instead of staying in Katy is because we were paying for these school districts that we don't even have kids that are using them. Um, and so that does increase your property taxes. Now, those property taxes uh, go down generally over time in the, in the sense that that mud tax is being paid. And so when we were living in Katy, we started off at a 3.75 tax rate. And by the time we left five years later, it was at a 3.25. So those taxes did go down a little bit, but generally your property value is going up at the same time, especially here because of all the growth and the appreciation. So we didn't necessarily feel like our taxes were going down because even though the mud tax was being paid, our property value was going up. And so it was essentially staying the exact same. Now there are older areas of Katy where you might be able to get a much lower tax rate um, that might be closer to a one or a two. Um, and, but those are gonna be older, more established parts of Katy. If it's newer, it's just gonna be high and that's just the nature of it. Now, pro number five of living in Katy is you really don't have to go into Houston for anything. For the most part, all of your shopping and dining and experiences are going to be in Katy within about a 15 to 20 minute drive. I would say on average for the time that it takes you to get out of your neighborhood and driving down Highway 99, for example, or I-10 in order to get to a restaurant, you're probably looking at an average time of about 20 minutes to get to a lot of things. Now, obviously there's gas stations and corner stores and little things within the community, especially if you're in Cinco Ranch, you're gonna find that there's a lot more stuff within a closer distance. You have places like Los Entero, which is an outdoor shopping center that has tons of restaurants, that has tons of shopping and dining experiences all kind of together in one area. Um, and then you're also gonna just find a lot more of those amenities and necessities dotted throughout Cinco because it was this massive master plan development. And so a lot of that stuff has been built out over time. So if you live in Cinco, I would say, you're probably looking at five to 10 minutes to get to most things. If you're living in other neighborhoods, maybe you're living in something like a Firethorn or you live in Cross Creek Ranch or you live in Tamaron or you live on the north side in Santerra, it's gonna be 20 minutes to really get to anything that you need to do, however, that means you don't have to drive into downtown Houston. So you really don't have to commute into the city unless it's for work. For the most part, if there's anything that you wanna do, it is going to be local. You're gonna have everything that you need within a short distance for driving. Now, con number five is there really is no meaningful public transportation. I'm not saying that there are not any buses, 
But if you come from a place like New York where you have a subway system or you're coming from somewhere that has a rail system or that just has any form of public transportation really at all, uh, like bikes that you can use and rent, like that stuff just doesn't really exist in, uh, in Katy. It is a more traditional suburban area. And because we're Texas and things are very spread out, you basically have to have a car to get around. There's really no way around that. You're not going to really be able to use any public transportation to get around the city. Now there are parking rides where you can actually go and park your car in a parking lot and then it'll it's a bus that goes on a regular interval and it'll pick people up and it'll take them into the city for work and then you can take that bus and come back home, get in your car and then go home. That does exist, but I will say it's a lot less convenient to do that. It's a lot more of a hassle. Um, and there's, you're really not going to be getting around on buses or public transportation to just do your regular things like shopping and going, getting groceries and doing errands and chores. You're going to need a car to get around and everything is kind of far away. So you're going to be getting on highways and toll roads and things like that to do all those basic things. So just keep that in mind. Um, there is more public transportation in Houston itself, but unfortunately Houston ranks as one of the worst in terms of public transportation across most major metropolitan areas. So even inside the city, you're really not gonna be using any public transportation there either. Even though there is more of it, we are just still so, so spread out. Uh, it's just so cumbersome to use those services a lot of times that they're not worth whatever you're paying. Even if it might be cheap or whatever you're saying, whatever, they're really not worth whatever you might be saving in terms of gas or the cost of using them. Usually uh, it's just, it takes so much longer or it's so much more of a hassle to use that it's just not really worth it. So we are a very car centric city. And unfortunately, um, it's good. We're getting better at it. Uh, Houston has been doing a lot of work to improve that, but we are still years and years away of really having a comprehensive public transportation system in the city of Houston, much, much less out in the city of Katy or these suburban areas. So just keep that in mind. All right. Those are my pros and cons for living in Katy, Texas. Now, if you're considering making this move, me and my team love getting calls from people just like you. And it happens all the time, looking to make the move to Houston, wondering what part of Houston might be best for their family. And so we love having a conversation, sitting down and talking through what your criteria is and what's most important. So shoot me a text, give me a call, send an email or schedule a Zoom consultation with me. I'd love to sit down and go through all that with you and help you make that move to Houston as smooth as possible. And if you didn't get a chance to watch my more in-depth videos on Katie itself, again, you can watch those here and here, and I'd love to get your feedback. If there's something in this video that I missed, a pro or a con about Katie, maybe you're a native and you live there right now and you think that I missed something, leave a comment down below. I'd love to know if there's something else that we can do to help people who are considering making Katie their home. As always, thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video and we'll see you on the next one.